What up everybody, Max here. Now I grew up in New York City and I've spent most of my life living in large cities from Miami to Los Angeles. And I've occasionally thought about the ways in which just living in those cities literally shapes the structure and function of your brain. And so in this update, I wanna talk about some of the latest research. People that live in cities tend to have overactive amygdalas. Now the amygdala is a structure in the brain that's been dubbed the fear center. This part of the brain evolved at a time when it was essential to our survival. When we were on the plane and we saw a lion approaching, that amygdala came in really handy because it activated this fight or flight response, which can ensure that we stay out of harm's way. But in today's modern world where physical threats are a lot less, everyday stress can activate that same region. And over the long term, chronic stress can be very problematic. Now, one thing that's very important is meditation, particularly for people that live in large cities, because meditation has actually been found to have the opposite effect. It actually has been shown to shrink uh, the amygdala, which is really fascinating and really beneficial. So very recently, researchers looked at the gut microbiome populations of US residents and compared them against residents of Papua New Guinea, which is one of the least industrialized nations in the world. And what they found was that the microbiome compositions, the microbiota of people living in the United States were vastly less diverse in their bacteria populations. Now, gut bacteria diversity has been linked to really good things like insulin sensitivity. And we're actually at the very tip of the iceberg now in terms of understanding just how a large an impact our gut microbiome plays on our health, our mood. But one thing that everybody can pretty much agree on at this point is that gut bacteria diversity is paramount. Now, another way in which the city can affect the health of your brain is that air pollution was recently found to correlate very highly with reduced white matter in the brain. Researchers at USC looked at the brains of women living in urban areas and found that the higher their exposure to air pollutants, the faster it seemed that their brains were aging. So definitely something to consider. And one more reason that reducing our collective carbon footprint might be a good thing. Now, another way in which city living can potentially undermine your brain health is that exposure to nature can have profound benefits on the brain. In fact, just last week a study came out uh, in which two groups of study participants were asked to take a walk and one group walked along a highway and another group took more of a nature walk. Now the group that was asked to take the nature walk showed less rumination at the end of the walk and rumination can be a major predictor for depression, so this is a great thing. But living in a city is not all bad. In fact, one recent study to come out in the journal Psychoneuroendocrinology, try to say that three times fast, found that city inhabitants had higher levels of BDNF, which is a neurotrophic factor that's been shown to ensure the survival of existing neurons, but then also promote the growth of new brain cells. And nobody can deny that living in a city you know, provides great access to health resources and the like. So it's not all bad, but these are just things to be mindful of. I hope this was enlightening to you guys. Again, my name is Max Lugavere. If you like these, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time. Peace.